Hi guys, Dotze here and welcome back to Arcanum. In the previous episode we were in the Isle of Despair and we met Aranox and now we're going to be at the Wheel Clan. I've already done this before but the recording was messed up so I have to redo this again so I'm not sure if I'm going to talk to every dwarf or do every single thing. That's going to take too much space and too much time. So I'm going to do the, exactly what I'm supposed to do. Alright, so I talk to the guards. Hold, what business have you in the caverns of Wheel Clan? Speak, I come with grave news. Tell guard, tell the guard your story. I see, this is grave news indeed. You need to speak with King Thunderstone. His house is directly northeast of here, just through the center passage. Speak with him and we will know what to do. Thank you, I'll do that. The sound might be messed up during the recording. I'm not really sure what the hell is going on. Try different settings. It, it shouldn't do this. But it still messes things up for some reason. Okay, so it's here somewhere. Yep, I already spoken to all these. They don't say anything. The guards don't really. A few people, like some guy wants a key. Another guy wants you to do a, a quest to kill crystalline spiders or whatever. That's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Move along. Well, they're so rude, but they're actually friendly when if you were to kill the spiders, but I'll do that later. Fuck it. Greetings, travelers. I'm sorry, I don't believe we've met. I am Randwar, Thunderstone, son of Lughair Thunderstone. I stand as chieftain and king in waiting of all the dwarves both over and under mountain in the lands of Arcanum. Welcome to the caverns of the Wheel Clan. Pleasure to meet you, Randwar. I have a few questions. Of course, what do you need? You said you were king in waiting? Yes, my father is unavailable and I rule in his stead. But I am not the true king and I will not be as long as my father lives. I am only a king in waiting. I see, I am in need of your assistance. Of course, what do you need? I come with news of a most dire nature. Dire nature? Of what are you speaking? I have a tale to tell. Tell him what has happened. Ranwar Squire for some time. I see, and you say you've been in the Isle of Despair to confirm the story of Godman or Bender? Yes, I was there and there was no sign of the Black Mountain Clan dwarves. This troubles me, my friend. We were giving assurances by Elberich. Assurances, bloody meddling. Oh, blast them all to the dark depths. Blast who? The elves? What is going on here? This is an old and dark business, the business of my father. And as I am his heir, it falls to me to make it right. But I know not what to do. He told me so little. What happened to your father, Renwer? Visibly shaken. My father. Great and solid, low-haired Thunderstone. King of the Dwarves, do you know of him, stranger? Yes, I do. I have met him before. The stories of his courage, of his strength, of his wisdom. My father, stone among stones, from out of the madness of the clan where he united us under one banner, under one king, through the sheer power of his will. Where is Renwar? Where is he, Renwar? What happened to him? It broke his heart, that heavy stone heart. He who warred against Lorik the Abjurer in the Pass of Gorgoth, who in victory burned Lorik alive, along with 10,000 of his dwarven followers, and this, this broke him like a child upon the stones of the world. Please, Radware, I need to know what has happened here. Radware calms himself. It is as the Orbender told you. My father permitted the banishment of his own people by the elves. He watched them sent away, heard their cries, with hardness born of a hundred generations of thunderstones. So where is he? My father came home, and upon his knees cried out for his lost foolish brethren. Tears of regret, stranger, regret, shame, and sorrow. The caverns shook with his fury, shook at the impact of his hands upon bare stone. He tore the clothes from his body and set his bulk against the walls and the floors, and his sorrow was marked in blood. And then, I told you, he left us, walked into the old caverns with nothing but harrow, first axe of the thunderstones, and with th that weapon he disappeared, exiled by his own grief, and left the wheel clan. He's never returned. I'm very sorry, what do the elves have to do with this? The elves, it was they who demanded the banishment of the Black Mountain Clan for their crimes. But as for the reasons, as I said, I know very little. My father never told me the details of his discussions with them. Only that what had been decided was necessary, and that the responsibility would be his. What crimes? What had the Black Mountain Clan done? Technology, manipulation, and natural force. The stone and gear works that make men gods. This are legacy given into the hands of reckless children. And the disease has spread. And the cost, stranger, oh, the bloody cost. Godman spoke of Gilbert Bates. Bates, it was Bates who spread technology and its disease. And who are we to blame him? Humans, cursed with brevity, lacking patience, lacking discernment. I've spent human lifetimes deciding on what type of stone to use in a mural. And look what they've done in only a few turns of the moon. And with these elves came to us speaking of punishments. Who
who were these elves? I have, I have no idea, and I know not why my father felt it necessary to speak with them, nor to heed their demands. As king, my father never should have allowed them to interfere, but for some reason he allowed it. He's never spoken a word about it since. It seems I'll have to speak with Lohair. Where is he? I told you, he exiled himself. He walked into the dredge and has never returned. The dredge, what is it? Where can I find it? The dredge is an old system of caverns, and mine actually, not far from here. The entrance is just beyond the entrance to these chambers and to the southeast. There you will find a stone archway. Beyond that you will find the dredge, into which my father disappeared. What can I expect to find in this uh, dredge? Right now it serves little purpose but to house in the sermon of foul creatures there are mine, cart tracks, and an occasional storeroom. No one ventures there anymore, so I don't know anything beyond that. You must know where he is. Can I convince you to tell me? Why would you think that? If a dwarf wants to be alone, then a dwarf stays alone. You're his son and heir. You'd have gone looking for him. And why? He left me here to rule a kingdom, and rule it I will. What sort of son would I be to uh, go be uh, running around in the dark looking for a father who doesn't care? And what has he left for you, Randwar? For me, he has left a crumbling clan. It's people confused and frightened at the changes in the world, hurt by the abandonment of their clan father and king. And it falls to me, to me, to hold us together. You've done your best, man, where your father would have been proud. But I am so very young, my people's respect for me stems more from my name than my experience. Still, a handful of lodestone weighs more than an armful of pumice. He still tells me that. Uh, I mean, he used to. I knew it. You have seen him. Where is he? W what? Are you calling me a liar? I tire of speaking, stranger. I wish you the best of luck, but I can give you nothing more. Of course not. I'm only trying to find the truth. Truly, the stakes are very high in this game we play. How am I to know the bedrock upon which rests your soul? Trust your feelings. I seek to throw light on all of this. I believe you, stranger. I truly do. I just might be able to point you in the right direction. Any help you'd give would be appreciated. I must admit it. You're correct. I do see him almost every day. Although he says very little, he lives deep within the dredge, but I have hidden passage through which I travel. I have a hidden passage through which I travel, and within it you will encounter no trouble. Just enter here. There's a secret passage under the throne. I trust you, stranger. Find your answers. Do what is right. I pray he will tell you what you need to know. I will certainly try. Thank you for your help, Randwar. What? Who dares disturb the exile of Thunderstone? Forgive me, your highness. I had no choice but to- Quiet. This insolence is unforgivable. The violation of my ancient right for solitude in exile is not broken so easily. Your life hangs in the balance, stranger. Speak quickly, lest you taste of the fury of Harrow. He has a double-edged X from his belt. Wait a moment, I come here with the blessing of your son. My son? Randver? He would dare permit such an affront? I've come here to writhe upon the blade of my sorrow, to live the thousand deaths by the ancient right of kings. These laws are passed down through the mountain from the beginning of remembered time. Your life is forfeit to them, as is my own. Do you understand? <laughs> Stop, I come with news of the Black Mountain Clan. What? How do you know? Speak quickly. Your life still hangs in the balance. Fine. I have a story to tell. Tell him what you know. I have no words. No words. My crime, it seems, is even more heinous than I thought. I deserve much worse than this mere isolation. Look here. I need to know exactly what happened. In all the time since the judgment was passed, I have never spoken of it. My shame has held my tongue. It seems that very shame shall now, finally, bring the betrayal to light. Please, these elves who approached you, who were they? <sighs> A delegation of elves sent from the Silver Lady herself. They came not long after Bates had built his first steam engine. Technology in the hands of the human had spread and advanced at an alarming rate. And the elves were hit first, and hardest. How? What had the spread of technology done to the elves? Their forests. Their forests were being cleared with the help of technology. Massive steam-powered clear-cutters. 
The oldest groves, towering and untouched for thousands of years, were being destroyed without prejudice. I saw much of this with my own eyes. The ancient forest of Morbahan is little more than a graveyard now. You mentioned the Silver Lady. Who is she? The Silver Lady is Mother Queen to the Elves. She is very old, much older than I, and very powerful in the ways of magic. And she was angry by what had happened to the forest? The delegation told me that she was extremely hurt and angry about the damage that had been done. According to them, because of her age and power, she was hurt the most by the clearing. Her connection to the forests was strongest of all. Have you ever spoken to her directly? No. I'm not sure if any but Elven eyes have ever been laid upon her. Over the years, we have corresponded through messengers. Elves and dwarves are very different, and we tend to stay away from one another. But our relationship, as culturally strained as it may be, has always been civil. We don't necessarily understand one another, but we've always respected the differences. Where does she live? In Kintara, the oldest city of the elves, somewhere within the glimmering forest. Were there elves living in the forest of Morbihan? I'm unsure, but I don't believe so. But the delegation said that the crimes were against all elves. You see... Elves feel a very strong connection to the world, to nature, and especially to forests. It's said that elven souls reside in the oldest trees. I don't know if this is true, but I do know there to be a strong connection between living things and magic. Why did the technology spread so fast among the humans? There are many reasons. Humans, in comparison with the other races, live such short lives. Because of this, I believe that every human action is motivated through fear. The fear of death. You would think that this was a relative issue. That humans would learn to live with this limitation and accept it. This is not true. And? And therefore, humans, when confronted with any situation, see it through the veil of their own mortality. Achieve, advance, perform. Humans are constantly driven by the shadow of their own death. This fear, unfortunately, clouds their judgment, deadens their sense of right and wrong. Humans act first, think later, and feel last of all. And in terms of technology? When Bates was given a look at our technology, he was overcome. As a human, his first thought was, what can I use this for? When it should have been, what is the cost of its use? Technology exploded in their hands because they are not burdened with our longevity. Humans rarely live long enough to see the consequences of their mistakes. What are the major differences between dwarves and elves? I've said before that there is a strong connection between living things and magic, and the magic flows the most strongly in the veins of elves. Dwarves are very different. We feel a strong connection to the earth, but in another way. We love those things which are eternal, unchangeable, earth, stone, metal. In those things are strength, but not life as you know it. And the elven delegation, what did they demand of you? They said that if the Black Mountain Clan was not punished, there would be war. War! I told them that a punishment was already being decided upon, and that we, as dwarves, would deal with them. They refused. They claimed rights as the afflicted, and therefore as the judges. They agreed that exile was a suitable punishment, but they wanted to be the vessel of that retribution. Are the elves a warlike people? Is it in their nature? No. I know that there was a time of violence many years ago among the elves. 
But from what I know of them, they are a very rational, peace-loving people. They know that ultimately, war benefits no one. I was very surprised when they came and threatened it. I see. There seem to be some inconsistencies here. Yes. The more we talk about it, I begin to get the same feeling. Yes, the elves would have been angry, but would they really have threatened war? Morbahan was a tragedy, but directly affected none of the elven communities. Perhaps my fear blinded me to such things before. And now this mystery. Where are the dwarves of the Black Mountain clan? Where indeed? What was it you feared, Lugner? Why agree to the terms? I am very old, stranger. You may know nothing of me, but believe me when I tell you that I've seen enough dwarven blood spilled to fill a thousand lifetimes. Have you any idea what it would mean for there to be a war between the elves and the dwarves? Our Canaan itself would not survive the conflict. And I was so very tired of filling tombs with the bodies of my people. But... But nothing. I chose to spare the dwarves, the world, the price of such a war. What was one clan's honor in comparison with the sheer cataclysm that would result otherwise? You ask what rights they had? None. They merely forced a choice, and I chose the path of least resistance, the least pain. That was my betrayal, stranger. What do you mean? You were merely acting out of concern. But that is the point. I am king of the dwarves. It is my responsibility to lead them, to protect them. But most importantly, it is my responsibility to defend their honor, their dwarven honor. By allowing my own fear or concern, regardless of how justified that fear might be, to overshadow their honor was an unforgivable transgression. Being a king isn't always easy. Even as king, the choice is never mine as to whether even one dwarf is stripped of his honor. I should have brought this to the people, or just flatly refused from the beginning. I was a coward, a failure, and this exile is my punishment. Given the choice now, I would have waged war against all of Arcanum to uphold the honor of that foolish little clan. Yes, look, her, but we can still make this right. Find the truth. I don't know, stranger. I think that it is too late for me. No, look, here. You still have a chance to right this wrong. No, my friend. It is no longer my burden. I've taken up another. I failed the dwarves once. I shall never do so again. Leave me here. Tell Randver he won't be seeing me anymore. I see now that the price for my cowardice is even more costly than I'd imagined. My poor dwarven brothers. I'm so very, very sorry. Please. Take this. A letter sent to me from the elven delegation. Within it is a name. Min Gorad. It's all I have. And all I'm willing to give. Perhaps you should seek out Kintara. City of the Elves. I know not where it is, but the village of Stillwater is near the edge of the glimmering forest in which, it is said, Kintara lies. Maybe someone there will know where to find it. But... I'll say no more. Leave me. I return to my exile. I am nothing. Jeez. Talk about complete depression. Hello, greetings, traveler. Hey, hello, Redware. Do you have a moment to speak? Of course, what do you need? I bring word of Thorwald Two Stones. Thorwald, he's been gone quite a while. We've been considering sending out a search party. I mean, it's been a hundred years or so. Then again, Thorwald always somewhat of a loner. What word have you concerning him? Wait, what? I thought I said this already. I thank you for making us aware. I'll send out a detachment as soon as possible. We'll bring him home. Glad to hear one or two more things. Of course, what do you need? Found your father. He gave me the information I needed. I'm very glad. Good luck on your quest. I hope you find the truth. Interesting. Okay, so I've already been on Angie's places. 
I'm gonna go do the crystalline quest. And if you guys are interested in the next episode, I will show more of the clan. Hold, what business have you? You're a stranger, just taking a look around. Where do these stairs lead to? These are the caverns of the dredge, an old system of mines. Ah oh, well, I'd like to look around if you don't mind. I'm sorry, but no one is allowed down into the dredge by order of Randwar Thunderstone. If you've a problem with that, you'll have to bring it up with him. I must be going. Okay, see, look at all this. You can do shopping here. There we go. Here's that spider. Funny, somehow I ended up here first. <laughs> the place is down here. It's down there, what the heck? Did I fuck something up or something? This is where the dwarves are killed. Okay, so I actually killed the spider earlier than normal. Hmm. That is weird. Foreman is the one you're looking for. Arvid's the man to see. I'm just a simpler miner, madam. Arvid's the man to see. Happy to meet you. Hello, sir. Might I ask who you are? The dwarf before you is thick, suit covered, with tattoos on his forearms. My name is Arvid Millstone, and I'm the foreman here in the Wheel Clan mines. A pleasure, Arvid. Why are all these miners standing here? Well, madam. There's been some trouble here in the mines as of late. We blasted a new tunnel a few days ago, and I have been losing miners ever since. The old dwarf shivers unconsciously. Sometimes when you dig deep, this deep, you find things that weren't even supposed to be found. I think there's something bad back there, something evil. Actually, I've already taken care of the beast. You have? I'm impressed, madam. What exactly were they? It seems to be a family of crystalline spiders. Dreadful beasts. I've heard legends about dread crystal spiders. Perhaps you ran into some of those. I never actually thought they were real. He shivers again. Thank you, my friend. The Wheel Clan is indebted to you. I must go. <laughs> Geode. <laughs> or maybe this is where... No. Ah, oh, here it is. Cheeky bastards. I still need to heal. I'm already there. Now let's see, where was this? Ah, that's a totally different... That's why. I don't know why the music is still like that. Persuasion, I need 15 charisma. 
There we go. Alright guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!